Hello everyone. I sure hope you're enjoying this fine weather that we're experiencing. At least up here in West New York it is. It's, it's great. It's some of the warmest weather we've ever seen for this time of year. So uh, it's going to cool off a little bit the, during the weekend, but let's just enjoy the good stuff while we have it. And I have a lot of a lot of that going on around me, so we're going to have to bear with it. But we need to take a look at this passage from Philippians. It's the one that's coming up for this Sunday. It's really a cool passage when you uh, put it together with the fact that this is Passion Sunday. Uh, Jesus rides into Jerusalem, triumphant entry. But as things go along during the week, it gets really hard, really tough on Jesus, on his disciples and it ends up with him on the cross. But this passage that we have, by most scholars, is, is thought to be either a poem or a hymn by the early Christians. It's, it's one that is, in the Greek especially, it's easy to memorize. It's one that lifts up who Jesus is in their midst. I'd like to just read that portion of our passage from it's the second chapter Philippians let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness and being found in human form he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes, many scholars believe this is one of the earliest Christian hymns that we have that Paul was aware of that perhaps Paul even used in his worship services, that he knew that the people in Philippi would know it, and he included it in the body of his letter. Now, it's important to realize that we've read quite a bit from the Apostle Paul, and nine times out of ten in his letters, he is chewing the people out, right? We've, we've kind of seen that here and there. All oh, those Corinthians, what a mess they made of life. The Galatians, the... Oh terrible terrible here in, in the book of uh, the letter to the Philippians it's kind of fun to read because although Paul is quite concerned uh, there's two women in the church that had a little disagreement and there seems to be just a little hint of of clickishness here and there but not like we found in the Corinthian church no way or even in the Roman church that uh, there were some issues going on there too but no, right here, things seem to be, hey, pretty pretty decent. So it's, it's an uplifting kind of letter. And this portion right here is also uplifting. In fact, if you look at what all surrounds it, and it's a, a letter well worth reading the whole thing, you find it's really talking about what love means in our lives, what Christian love is, what love is between ourselves and the love that we've experienced from God. So it's a uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, passage. This one especially. Now, what's interesting about this uh, hymn, this psalm, song that, I said psalm because so many of the psalms were sung, but this song or hymn, or if it was just a poem, it embodies a lot of Greco-Roman thought, which would be exactly what this church at Philippi is surrounded by. So some of that language is there that is kind of foreign to Hebrew thought, but Paul uses it. He uses it to bring across the point that be like Jesus. <laughs> he says it right off the, at the beginning, have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, think like Jesus. Say to yourself, what would Jesus do? You know, that's a, that's a great thing to think about. 
What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? How would he react? Well, this is how you have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ, the ability to do that by simply doing this. Just empty yourself. Don't puff yourself up and think you're better than everyone else. Empty yourself. Jesus did that. In fact, when he took on our humanity, he took on the worst of it. He became a slave. That's the very bottom of the social order. He took on being a servant, being a slave for you and for me. And he became obedient, obedient to God's will, all the way to the point of dying on a cross. Some of that's kind of hard to fathom. And I'll be honest with you, these verses right here have become fodder for a lot of theologians to have arguments over just who Jesus is, who he was, uh, why did God send Jesus, his, his son. I mean, they go on and on about I don't even like to get into that stuff. It just is just kind of crazy if you ask me. Um, it might be important to talk about it, but still, oh, I like to sit back and think about Jesus being obedient to God so far, so long that he went to the cross for you and for me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Because he was humble, he emptied himself, he got down on his knees and washed those disciples' feet on that last meal he had with them, showing them what it means to be a servant, and then getting up and going out and facing reality, the reality being he would die on a cross, obedient to the end obeying the law of love love for you love for me philippians chapter 2 beautiful beautiful talk on what jesus did what he means for us and how we should also have that same mind that was in jesus christ be like jesus Enjoy your day. Enjoy my chickens. They kind of quiet it down now that I'm done. God's blessings be with you. And we will see you later.